straight out of Warsaw, Flying Wild Hog returns with Shadow Warrior 2 and its custom Roadhog engine. It's always fascinating to see what talented programmers and designers can achieve when working with in-house technology, and Shadow Warrior 2 is a remarkable example of what happens when everything goes right. This is without a doubt one of the most beautiful PC games of the year, featuring lush forests filled to the brim with gently swaying foliage, babbling brooks, and beautiful wooden structures, to the stunning neon-soaked future cities. There's a real sense of style and diversity in the game's presentation. But Shadow Warrior 2 is actually a game of firsts on the PC here with a pair of interesting new features that add greatly to the experience. And the first of those is NVIDIA's Multi-Res Shading, a feature designed to increase performance while limiting image quality sacrifices to a mere portion of the screen. Now the technique was originally designed for VR applications where your eyes focus more on the middle of the image, making the periphery less important overall, but it actually works surprisingly well here. Essentially, when enabled, this feature lowers the resolution of the outer border of the image while maintaining full resolution within the center. The idea is that most users, while playing, will be focusing more on the middle of the screen and won't actually detect the image quality degradation around the edges during normal gameplay. So how does it work then? Basically, according to the game's developers, the frame buffer is broken up into nine screen space region rectangles with independently defined resolution values. A small geometry shader then replicates geometry to those nine regions using region information and some math, followed by a final pass which merges and upscales the nine regions into the intended resolutions. Solving for post-processing effects demands a different approach, however, something which requires variable scaling per region in order to avoid inconsistent blurring across the image. The one downside here is that the temporal anti-aliasing feature doesn't actually work with this at the moment, but it is something that can be added in a future patch. Currently though, this technique only functions on Maxwell and Pascal-based NVIDIA graphics cards due to the reliance on the fast geometry shader pass-through, which is only available on those cards. So is it actually worth using then? Well, based on my own experiences, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, it does actually work quite well. Now, if you're intentionally focusing on the borders of the screen, you will notice the degradation. But during regular gameplay, it really isn't distracting at all. I do think this might vary based on the screen size and distance, however. But it did work well for me, and it definitely gives you that extra performance that you might need, which can help alleviate drops in the busier scenes. And there are a lot of busy scenes in this game. So multi res shading is certainly a neat addition, but there's actually another interesting feature included in the game that I really quite like, and that is support for high dynamic range displays. That's right, this is the very first PC game to offer full HDR support, and it is beautiful. I've extolled the virtues of HDR many times before now, but I feel that the implementation here is a step up from other games. Shadowy areas can actually appear much darker and richer in HDR, while bright areas such as the sky or neon lights appear incredibly bright. In SDR mode, the game uses a lot of eye adaptation and tone mapping to constantly shift what the player is seeing, but in HDR, it's much more natural looking. But it does require some fiddling to get right. Now, this could vary from system to system, but in our experience, we had to settle for 420 chroma subsampling at 10 or 12 bit color. Now, this is a limitation due to the HDMI standard at the moment, unfortunately. The bandwidth simply isn't there for RGB or 444 at higher bits per channel. That's the thing though, you can actually run HDR in 8-bit mode, but the resulting color banding kind of defeats the purpose. It might look just fine in some areas, but when the banding becomes noticeable, it's very distracting. Moving away from these features, the engine itself is really quite impressive overall. It's a highly optimized game here with plenty of tweakables. This new iteration of Roadhog makes use of physically based rendering and new procedural character destruction which is very useful for melee combat. This all comes with a huge change in the level pipeline, which ties into one area where we were initially concerned. The truth is I'm not a huge fan of the level design in previous games produced by the studio and hearing that these new levels now had randomized elements really concerned me, but in the end the actual randomization feature works pretty well. 
The individual level blocks are now more detailed than before and still crafted by hand, but how they are connected can be randomized. The configuration of level interiors can also be randomized, as well as things like weather and lighting conditions. The levels actually still feel pretty unique, but the randomization adds to the replayability. The game also features a massively overhauled vegetation system which is far more flexible for the developers and offers a much higher level of detail for the players. The whole creation pipeline is improved to the point where the team could work faster and more efficiently while creating more detailed, complex level chunks. As for the rest of the options, here's a quick look at the various presets in action. You can see that a lot of visual quality is sacrificed at the lowest preset, but the game does still look excellent at medium or higher. Beyond multi-res shading, it's also possible to adjust resolution scaling manually from the menu, and of course you can modify the game's FOV. Ultimately, Shadow Warrior 2 puts forth a very strong presentation here, and the Roadhog engine has improved tremendously since its last outing. We're very interested to see how this game turns out on consoles, since it is still coming to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. The engine is more optimized than what we saw in Shadow Warrior 2013, I feel, but the visual quality has improved tremendously, so it'll be very curious to see if those consoles can match it. As for the game itself, well, I was initially turned off by the addition of loot and quests, but I'm starting to get into it. It's a very well-made game all around, and most people do seem thrilled with it, so it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you own an HDR-capable display. But that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.